we're going to do just a basic weave in and out of them. This is not overly challenging. Um, it is, however, going to give you the visual. This is, again, more for you than for her. But to say, I am making S-curves here. Uh, uh, uh. Good. Hey everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone and today we've got an awesome video for you. This is about healing. One of the number one things that we see people struggle with and ask us about all the time with their dogs. Now, I wanna cover a couple things. First of all, we've got some prerequisites here for this type of drill. First and foremost, I have Splash. Pretty little girl here. Has spent a good amount of time healing. Now, when she started, she utilized our Easy Lead. How this works is it is a standard leash that we can turn into a slip lead by running the leash itself back through the eyelet and then making a makeshift head halter, okay? This material that we make these out of makes this work really well because it's springy. So you get a good amount of tension when you apply it and then relax of the material. If you use just a standard rope or standard leash, all it does is tend to bind and then the dog never receives a release of pressure. So this is an important part of this, but she learned how to heal. Good. Um, and this allows you to apply very, very, very minimal pressure in the training session, which is awesome. As she got better with this, this part here slips right off. Boom. Now we have a standard, what would be considered a slip style leash. Okay. Now, we progressed through this process where she did a good job healing with a slip style leash. And then we started the collar conditioning process, which ultimately allows us to take this all the way back out to now having a four and a half foot long leash that we can make corrections using an e-collar. Good. Now, if you follow any of our other healing videos, this is the process that we show. If your dog gets to this point, but still seems to be struggling, that's where these drills are going to come in. Now, before we get started with the actual training session, I wanna mention a couple things. If your dog doesn't follow along exactly how we do it in the video session today, check us out at patreon.com slash standingstonekennels, which is where we offer a step-by-step -step training program, as well as can just a, a help assist with some basic questions that you may have if your dog doesn't follow along exactly like we do in the video. The last thing that I want to mention is anything that we're using, including this DT Systems e-collar, they're available at standingstonesupply.com. Now, cones, a leash, an e-collar, and a dog that's pretty well prepared to do a decent job healing on lead, that's what we need to get started. I'm going to show you just a couple drills. I have five total cones, and we're going to start with four of them, okay? We'll get you out of the way. Now, while I set this up, I'm going to actually utilize kennel place training here we've got a board set up and this is going to give us the ability for her to stay put on kennel while we get these things rocking we have four corner drill this involves four cones and i'm guessing that you've already got the gist of what's going to be happening here i am setting the cones in a square or as close as we can get now, the cool thing about these cones is they are not so much for her, they are more for, okay, heel. They are more for you. While you are training your dog, you need some form of visual because the number one mistake, here it is, ready? The number one mistake that we see people when they are trying to improve their dog's ability to walk on leash is they start straight away with, I've got my dog hooked up, I am going to go for a walk and we venture off down the sidewalk in a straight line for somewhere in the vicinity of one to two miles or something to that effect, all right? That's the end goal. I, I want all of our dogs to be able to go on long walks and, and work through distractions, do all of those things, but we have to start here in a controlled environment, okay? Cones are gonna help us with this, and then when your dog is really good at these drills, we're gonna introduce distractions into the drills, and then finishing that, you're ready to go on a walk still prepared and having the tools to work through it. Four corner drill. There's a number of different ways that you can work through this. You can utilize these for outside turns. This is gonna be a big one here. When you are walking, see, 
This is why we're doing this with her. She struggles with the paying attention category, and there's a number of different ways that you can work through this. One, conditioning is gonna help, and two, you're gonna actually be able to apply food reward, food reward, food reward. Now, if your dog is super food motivated, that may work for you. It's gonna work right up until there's a bigger distraction, and for her, it's gonna be a squirrel, or another dog, or a person, or a bird flying by. That is what is more important here. So we're gonna work through this via conditioning. Now, the corners here. This is gonna provide a couple different things to work through. We're gonna make outside turns. That's where the dog is on the outside of the turning environment. Then we're gonna make inside turns. That's where the dog is gonna be on the inside. And these cones are gonna give us a really good visual of whether or not the dog is doing what they're supposed to and whether or not they're walking with us or we're walking with them. We'll do inside turns first. Inside turns are great for dogs that are overly excitable and not really paying attention because it slows them down. Uh, 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 good. So again, this is a dog that already knows pretty good leash manners, but is struggling with some more concepts of focusing through things. So these are our inside turns and she looks like she's doing pretty good with that until you see this, right? Surged ahead again, focused on something else. Uh, 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 uh. As I'm approaching these corners, I'm giving her a little feedback from the leash here, light tugs as a, hey, focus, focus, here it comes. We're going to change directions again. Good. You can start to see her picking her eyes up more in the direction of me, kind of cocking her head back like, oh, which way are we going, Dad? Good. Now, you work through a few of these, you can start turn around and make those outside turns. Good, come on. Evaluate what your dog is struggling with more. She cuts way outside. Me knowing I'm turning here at this cone gives me the ability to say, well, I didn't float out here with her. I'm in fact actually trying to stay true to this path that I've created and I see that she's not paying attention and that's what we need to work through. Again, a little feedback from the leash. Good. Good. There we go. I don't know if y'all saw that, but that was cool. She checked up. She's recognizing these cones and she's saying, I get it. So that is one example. We're gonna go ahead and toss her back over here. Kennel. Place boards are awesome, folks. You get the opportunity to um, Get things set up, dog's under control, you're not fighting that. Now, we're gonna move into this and we're gonna use this as, you can call it the inline drill. I know, real creative here. I can imagine you're thinking right now, he's gonna put those cones helter-skelter everywhere. No, we're gonna put them in a line, folks. So, we've got one cone here. We're going to spread them apart approximately five yards. We've got two cones three cones, trying to keep them pretty well in a line. And cone number five. Okay, so two things that we can do with this. Both of these are gonna help her. We're going to do just a basic weave in and out of them. This is not overly challenging. Um, it is, however, going to give you the visual. This is, again, more for you than for her. But to say, I am making S curves here. Uh, 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 good. You can make these cones further apart or tighten them up. Good. Now, heel. There was one correction from the collar. You can utilize either, I've been primarily using the leash. I would like the ability to be able to completely um, loose leash heel her and using this to communicate is gonna be a really good tool. Heel. Now I want you to notice that I'm not saying heel, 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 heel the entire time that we're doing this. Um, you need to think about healing like any cue or any um, ask of the dog. We say the cue once unless we lose complete focus, but we're pretty much saying the cue once and that means stay in this walking at heel position until we're done. Uh, uh, uh. Now. Another thing that you can add into, here's a, a fun tip. 
This is the hurry up and wait aspect of things. This is taking a moment, stand here, think about standing here, and if you wanna watch birds, that's fine, but you need to be able to do this without moving your feet. We're gonna make minor adjustments for her, minor leash corrections, just to say, hey, focus here, but take that time. Don't think we have to be constantly moving. This is I'm stopped at a stop sign or stopped at a light or about ready to cross the street. I need you to be able to recognize that we need to stop and stand still. So practice this while you're in the yard, not in that high distraction environment. Now, we're gonna go ahead and weave back. We went this way, we'll go ahead and go this way. There's not a whole lot of difference here, but this is gonna set us up for the last use. Hey, good. Good. Okay, so we're going to utilize this. That can use a little bit of practice yet. You can see she's making some progress in this one session, but it's still at the same time, you can also see why we're doing these things. She's lacking focus, right? She's looking all over the place. This one's a really good one to be able to judge how honest you're being. And we did this before and called it the 10 yard drill. This is gonna be very similar to this, utilizing cones. Whichever you need to be on, whether you want the cones on your right, or you want to provide the cones closer to the dog, Either way is gonna help give you a visual. I'm specifically going to set this up so that the dog is between me and the cone. And this is gonna provide a little bit of a challenge for her, but at the same time, a really good visual for us. Sometimes dogs will wanna cast or float one side or the other of the cone. We're gonna give her enough room that's gonna kinda of help her to feel more comfortable staying close to us. But then finally, we're going to just be walking in a straight line here, working more on that stopping and standing still category where we heel forward and we stop at the cones. That gives us the really good visual of that, that plane here. Did she cross it or did she actually stop with me? Because I know where I'm stopping and that prevents you from trying to be, yo, know, oh, helpful to the dog. Oh yeah, we kind of stopped at the same place, right? So we'll start here, good, heel. Good girl, a little bit of love. Then we'll take some time to stop and stand still. And then you can ask again, it's fine, heel. So this was a little more of a float. What I will typically do is you can back heel. This adds a new variety to the healing and then start again, heel. And then see if we can stop at this cone. Where are you going? Hey. Back heel again. This pulls focus back this direction. Good, heel. We'll head back up this way. We'll try again. A little bit of talk there. Very, very subtle. Just almost the jingle here of metal on metal between the collar unit. That was enough to kind of keep her focus. Heel. Uh, 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 uh. Back heeling again. Come on. Good, heel. Little bit of that communication again. You know, you think about it too from a respect that you've got to, you want, we want our dogs to pay attention to us, but we've also got to have the ability to communicate a little bit to them what we're doing. Imagine, you know, being attached to somebody else as a leash and them saying, keep up with me, but they never tell you what they're doing and they speed up and they slow down and they stop and you're, it's your job to just focus on them constantly, well, you're gonna get distracted on occasion. So a gentle tap on the shoulder, hey buddy, we're gonna stop here, is a, is a very helpful tip, especially in the beginning stages of this. Last step here, heel. Good, that's really good girl, excellent. All right, folks, that is uh, three really cool drills that you can do that are simple with the use of a cone to practice your healing in the yard. Again, folks, if you have questions, make sure and reach out to us at patreon.com slash standingstonekennels, as well as anything that you see, need, or you need help with, you can check out at standingstonesupply.com. I'm the guy with the pink gun. This is Splash. We'll see you in the next video.